today I'm going to walk you through rebuilding a uh, AC. It's an AC dual action fuel pump for 52, 42 to 52 Chevrolet pickup truck, six cylinder, with a glass ball. This one just happens to carry the number. Forty-five twenty-six, which is it's one of three different numbers that'll fit this particular fits this particular pump. This is the like the original version. <coughs> Later they went to a uh, a higher number. I think it's 9803. I could be wrong on that, but they they changed the design of the fuel casting. Went with a metal bowl, uh, a metal cover that went over this. The arm changed a little bit. Instead of one of these laminated steel arms, they went to a, a solid arm with a, a metal plate on it. They'll all fit the same thing. Mounted in a vise, grab them by one of the mounting ears. Mark the location, the orientation of how this top cover is to the body. Just so that you can get the inlet and outlet ports back where they belong when they were on the vehicle. First, we want to remove this bolt. This is the vacuum side. There's a fiber washer right here that um, you'll get that a new one of those in the kit if you do this at home. Get a new gasket. Sometimes you'll find a, a filter screen right in here. You don't have to use that again, just disregard it. I think we even include one in the kit. You can put it in if you want, you don't have to. Once your, your, uh, your location is marked, you can either take a picture of it or scribe a line from the top casting to the body casting so that you get this back in the same spot. Now, this particular cover has eight screws holding it together. What you want to do is undo seven of them and hold off on the last screw. And I'll show you why in a second. The reason for holding off on this last screw is there's a spring under here that if this top casting was stuck to the diaphragm and you unscrewed this, it would give you the impression that you're, uh, you're all set and then all of a sudden it lets go and sends it to the motor. That wasn't the case in this one. As you can see, that spring is compressed down to probably half its size. So it's under a pretty good, a fair amount of pressure, a amount of tension. Underneath here is your inlet and outlet valves. You want to remove that screw, this clamp, and take out the two valves and these two gaskets underneath them. vacuum diaphragm. Now these are, this particular one has a square, a square hole in the, in the pull rod. So what we have to do is stick this up a little bit and try to scoot the bottom out of it, out of the links. 
Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. Go back a little bit, see if you can turn it. If all of a sudden you can, then you've unhooked it. Now the seal in the center, chances are it's all dried out. And it was that's what was holding this one in. That's the square hole. Gives you access to the seal. Just pop it out. And remove the seal. As you can see, it's well used. Down inside of here. Is there's a, a filter of sorts, but it's what it is is um, just like oh, I consider it hot here. This is uh, just about dissolved. Not much of it left in there, and most of it's fallen out through the bottom. So we're just going to leave that. And then we'll uh, we'll get out whatever's left. <clears throat> Onto the fuel side. The first thing you want to do is mark the location, just like the vacuum side. Scribing it, taking a picture, whatever you have to do. Take the bowl off. Oh, this one's been around for a while. The uh, looks like the this is supposed to be a filter, and it's just about disappeared. Wasn't doing too much filtering though, is it? Remove the bail. There's a gasket here that the bowl sat on. Make sure you get all that old gasket out of there. You can take out all six of these screws. The spring that's underneath here is, is between the diaphragm and the body. So it, it'll only pop up a little bit if it does at all. stuck down there and you're really letting all the valves for the fuel side. Removing this diaphragm sometimes can be tricky. You have to go down just a smidgen, <laughs> dip it back and try to scoop the bottom of the pull rod back this way to unhook it off of the link. Sometimes it comes out right away. Other times it gives you trouble. This is the fuel pressure spring. This is what gives you your four and a half or three and a half pounds of pressure. There's a seal down in here with a retainer. I come up from the bottom. Some people will take it at the top and pop it over. But it, what happens ends up what it ends up doing is breaking this casting at the top. Here's the retainer, and that's what's left of the seal. Kind of looks like the uh, has the same problem as that filter. And 
this will probably take a trip through the wash tank first before it goes over to be bead blasted. If you find that the, the arm twists at all or moves side to side more than usual, it shouldn't move at all. It should just be a tiny bit in here. In order to repair that, you have to knock this pin out. The first thing you're going to do is cut that washer right there. Knock, drive the pin out with a punch and you'll be able to take the arm out along with the links and the spring that's down inside of here. Another reason to take the arm out would be if that spring is broken because you can't really fit it down inside of there. So you have to pull the arm out, put the spring in, put the arm back in. You get a new pin comes with a couple of clips for the ends and you get a uh, there's a, a sleeve that goes inside of here and that's it you get a new spring no I already showed you that okay you gotta get these valves out Easiest way to do it, turn it upside down, set it in the vise so that it grabs it and it isn't going to move. Catch the corner of that. Catch this edge and pop it up with your screwdriver. The other side, you got to be kind of crude. Punch the screwdriver through the center and just pull it off to the side and it will pull it right out. There's two gaskets in here. There's one. The other one I can't really get at because it's the way the casting is. So we'll kind of we kind of dig it out of there. you can see in here, this hole here is perfectly round. This one here has a couple of ledges on it. And I'll show you how, how that uh, plays an important role in putting the new valves in. This thing going to take a trip through the wash tank too. Now removing these valves of course is easy like I said before. Just a matter of removing that center screw. And these two valves are just dry. They just come out. And also those two gaskets. Yeah, one of them just fell out. And the other one I gotta dig it out. This another piece is gonna take a trip through the wash tank. So it looks like disassembling this one is complete. We just got to clean up all these parts. We're going to wash them all, all the grease and oil off them, and then it's going to take a trip through the uh, through the glass beading tank. We'll clean up all the castings, make everything nice and clean, clear coat it. And then we'll flatten out all the surfaces, all the mating surfaces, and we'll uh, be ready for reassembly. We'll be back. Now that everything's nice and clean, all the surfaces are nice and flat. We can start some assembly. Vacuum side. Out of your kit. Dig out four of these paper washers. 
set them down in on a little ledge that's right in there. These are the valves that you're going to get. These are our own design. And this, you can probably force this in, but you don't want to put, do that. With this hole is a little smaller in diameter and the center, you obviously want to put that with the rivet up. The other side, rev it down because there's room for it. Put on the clamp. And the screw. And tighten it down. Get a cover. Put the gasket on there that comes in the kit. Don't forget the fiber washer. What you want to watch for in these, some of these covers have see this little piece of steel sticking down. You want to make sure you don't get it over that. Sometimes they stick out a little bit too far and it keeps the cover from sealing down tight. Snug it down, just keep in mind that you're screwing a steel screw into cast aluminum and you don't want to over tighten it, you'll strip the threads out. Now putting the valves in the in the fuel casting. You can sit it on a vise so that it's supported here and here which is opposite of, which is on the same side as the where you're going to be uh, pressing in. I made a little tool that sits in here and supports it and keeps it up off the off the vise. Again, get two more of these paper washers. Set them in the holes. Remember when we were taking this apart, I was mentioning how the casting sticks out a little bit. That's along the same ideas as the vacuum side where the hole is smaller. It's letting you know that put the rivet side up. I think a 916 socket will fit. I didn't like that. If they go in real easy, take a, um, a slotted screwdriver or you could do like I did and just grind off the end of a, a chisel that you don't use. Dent the casting in a couple of spots. It's just added security so that the valve doesn't come out. Hmm. Putting the gasket that you'll get in the kit. Make sure it's seated down all the way. And you'll also get this filter screen that sits over it. And just tap it down around here till the just till this here comes in contact with the screen.
or it meets up with the, uh, the little ledge on the casting. Put the barrel on. In a nice clean bowl. Watch around here that there's no chips or pieces of the uh, cork gasket left in there. Turn it down. You know, to to kind of test to make sure that this is sealed good and the valves are sealed. On the inlet, you should be able to blow air in and not suck air out. Same thing with the outlet. You should be able to suck air out and not blow air in. And that works fine. On to the body. The first thing to go in is going to be the seal. This is a retainer that you'll get, and this is the seal that you get. It goes together just like that, and sits right down inside. The one you took out went this way. Set it down inside, get whatever driver you used. Oh, you used. It's uh, a, like a one inch dowel we'll use to, will work to press this in. Just start it, make sure that it's centered. And again, around the edge. You want to dimple in four spots just to keep that retainer from coming out. And you dimple in the casting, not the aluminum. Now we can put the fuel diaphragm in, get a dab of motor oil, put it right in the center of that, because <clears throat> we don't want that Pull rod to run dry. Get it started in there and flip it over. And just watch inside and you'll see the pull rod come up. Just hook it onto the diaphragm. And I don't think you'll be able to see it in there. Anyway, you'll see it looking in through there. Put it back in the vise and find your reference mark so that you know that's going back on the same way as it came off. Two screws, one on either side, push them through the diaphragm. Pull the arm so it drops the diaphragm down and lines up the screws with the holes. And run them down about halfway. Put the other screws in and do the same thing. Run them down about halfway. Now this next step is rather important. Grab an adjustable wrench. Put it on the arm. Uses leverage only because it's so short. Pull that arm up all the way until it stops. Make sure you're not hitting the casting with the with the uh, adjustable wrench. And what you're doing is preloading the diaphragm. Doing this will help the diaphragm last longer. Keeps it from tearing. Use it from stretching. This is when you're tightening down the screws. And 
just make sure that you got them all. Mm -hmm. That's the sound of success. The inlet is over here. Put the, put the arm relaxed. Put your finger over the hole over the port. And pull it. Pull the arm up. And you should feel resistance there. Hold it up, cover it, and you'll feel pressure going out. Vacuum side. Seal goes in the same way as the fuel side. Retainer. Seal with the dome up. Press it in. Dimple around the edge. Just to keep it from sliding out. A little spot of oil in the center. Just like the other side. Now, what we want to do is we want to pull that arm all the way and it, and it brings those links up close to the top of the casting so you can get it caught. Put it down so you can feel it. And then go right in. Spring seat. Spring. Vacuum casting. Put two screws, just like the other side, one opposite each other. Press it down and get these again about halfway. Make sure it goes through the diaphragm. Check around the edge that so you can see the diaphragm all the way up, right out at the edge. And then put these three screws in. Get them caught. And you want to watch around the other side. Because sometimes the the pressure of the spring pushes the diaphragm down and folds them in and it gets caught behind the casting. So what I do is I take a shorter adjustable, put it on this arm, because the arm goes straight down. Pull it up a little bit. And if you have to, either take a popsicle stick or something and run it around the edge to make sure that the diaphragm is not caught. Yeah, and run these screws about halfway down. Now we want to preload the vacuum side too, but it's a little different. Instead of pulling it all the way up, which would pull the diaphragm all the way down, we want this one to be in a neutral position. So you watch the diaphragm. You'll see it. It'll go from being up, up like this in the middle, and then it'll go down as you go all the way. Go about halfway. We want this in the neutral position. Get four of the screws secured and you can let go of the arm. <laughs> Tighten all the rest of them down.
Well, that brings it to an end. All we got to do is put the gasket on and install it on the on the engine and go for a ride. Remember, if you want to order a kit for it, you want to call it in by this number. The number that's stamped on the flange. Uh, there could even be a tag on it with the number on it. Also include the application so whoever answers the phone and takes the order can double check it and make sure that that pump actually goes to that. A lot of times if the uh, rebuilder doesn't pay attention you could have a different number here. So what they, they just throw everything in a big box and they pull out yep that's the right type of casting and then they assemble it and don't bother changing the number or forget to put a tag on it in any event I hope this video helps you if you want to get in touch with us we're on the web at then-now.com telephone is 781-335-8860 and Leave any comments you want down in the comment section down below. <clears throat> Subscribe. And don't forget to hit the little bell so that you get notified of any other future videos. And thanks for watching and be safe out there.